Clouds are not just in the sky. They're also crucial for businesses today. Many companies now store their data in cloud servers, as it's easier to access and review all of the data circling around their IoT solutions. As we aim to help you achieve your goals as easily as possible, let me show how you can send your solutions data to the Azure IoT Cloud via the Modbus protocol. The configuration we'll guide you through works on all Teltonica routers and gateways. So let's use the TRB140 cellular gateway as today's example. For this scenario, let's assume that the gateway serves as both the server and the client. The gateway will both request and send necessary data, functioning simultaneously in client and server roles. First things first, log in to your device and turn on the advanced mode. And let's quickly download the Azure IoT Hub package, as we'll need it later. To do so, go to the System section, select the Package Manager tab, there, find the Azure IoT Hub package and install it. Navigate to the Services section, select the Modbus tab and open the Modbus TCP server page. The first thing you need to do is enable the Modbus TCP server. You can leave the default settings for port, device ID and connection timeout. Press save and apply. Now let's go to the Modbus TCP client. Press add to create a new Modbus TCP device configuration. Here you'll assign a server from which you'll gather data. Enable the configuration and name it as you prefer. Next to the address field, input the IP address or hostname of the server device from which you want to gather data. In our case, we will enter the gateway's IP address. In the server ID and ports fields, ensure the details match the configuration in the previously configured Modbus TCP server window. As you can see, you must also fill out the number of timeouts and period fields. Number of timeouts defines how many requests can fail before disregarding the remaining pending requests from the set request list. The number you enter for the period indicates the scanning frequency of the set data, which is measured in seconds. Now, if you enable the Always Reconnect function, you'll see a different set of configuration options. This function ensures that the TCP client always disconnects after receiving data and automatically reconnects whenever it needs to receive a new data packet. Speaking of data, Scroll down a bit to find the Request Configuration section. This is exactly where you'll specify what data you want to collect. Note that you'll have to create separate requests for each specific data you want to receive. To create a new request, name the configuration and click Add. Here, you can see a list of specifications that will help you tailor your data requests. The data type specification determines how the obtained data will be interpreted. You can learn more about it on our wiki page linked in the description. In the function section, choose the read holding registers option, which indicates that we'll be scanning information from the registers. The specific register number you need and the number of registers can be found on the same wiki page mentioned before. In fact, this entire list of registers in our wiki page applies to the vast majority of our routers and gateways. Don't forget to enable the request and that's it. You've now configured one of the registers you want to receive. Suppose you want to test whether this request works. Scroll even further and find the request configuration testing section. There, you'll find the entire list of all the requests you've created. Select the recently added request and press test. If the request was created successfully, you should see the received data. By scrolling down to the bottom of this window, you'll find the alarms configuration section. Here you can configure alarms to perform specific actions under certain conditions. So if you want to set an alarm following the same request you just made, you should add a new configuration and enable the alarm. Next to the function code, choose read holding register if you want to perform actions with the same register values as previously selected. Make sure to insert the first register number you provided earlier and in the value section, enter a specific number to compare with the register's value. One alarm type option is to send a message. So if you choose your alarm to be an SMS message, the frequency and condition of sending this type of alarm depend on the information selected in the condition and action frequency specified above. Of course, if you choose a message as your type of alarm, you should also specify the message content and the phone number to which the gateway should send the alarm. 
for save and apply and your alarm will be configured. Since our gateways can now collect said data, we can now configure the device to send data to a cloud server, such as today's interest, Azure IoT. But first, let's define what the data will look like when it is sent to Azure IoT. Go to the services section and click on the data to server option. Add a new instance by typing the collections name and pressing add. A new window will pop up. There, provide a name for the data input, set the type to Modbus, and in the format type section, choose the format for receiving the data. You can also set the data to be sent in a custom format. The data filtering section is optional and really depends on your needs, while the segment count section indicates the number of scanned requests per segment. Once all of that is set up, click on the collection edit button and let's move forward. In the new window, you can configure the format for the final data structure. In our case, let's leave the format type as previously selected. In the period field, you can set the interval of seconds on how often the data will be sent to the cloud. Press the server configuration button to open up a new window. Here, next to the data server type, choose Azure IoT Hub. Choose the configuration type to be unique and select the connection type method to be an SAS key. Now, let's go over to the Azure portal and show you how to retrieve the connection string. Log into your Azure portal account and go to the IoT Hub service. Let's assume you already have an existing IoT Hub instance. Click on the device section and add the device you just configured to this list. To do this, press the add device button for a new window to pop up. Here, you can find several authentication types available with the symmetric key being the default. Since it aligns with the connection type we've just set on root OS, leave all the default settings as they are. Just make sure to enter the device name in the device ID field, of course, and press save. With the device being added to your IoT hub, select it from the device list and copy its primary connection string located in the device's information. This is the exact connection string you need to paste to root OS. Press save and apply, and that's it. You're done with the entire configuration process. If you want to check incoming Modbus data on Azure IoT Hub, you can use multiple applications like Azure IoT Explorer or Azure CLI. Let's use the latter one as an example. Open your CLI and type in two commands. The first one is to connect your Azure account and the second one is to track and monitor device to cloud messages. This grants you to receive requested data based on your set time. If you've previously configured a data to server connection to Azure IoT Hub, there are a few changes that came with the latest version of Root OS, version 708. We've added three new ways to connect to Azure IoT Hub through device provisioning service, X509 certificates, or symmetric keys. Plus, there's a new direct method functionality, enabling cloud-based management of our device via our API. We really hope you found this tutorial helpful and are inspired to set up your own data to server configuration. If you have any questions about any part of the process, remember, we're always here to assist you. Also remember to subscribe to our channel and follow for more tips on improving your IoT solutions.